I've been doing YouTube for almost 11 years now, and the idea that I have crossed a decade is just insane to think about. So I thought this was a good time at the end of the year to summarize the last decade of my channel, as well as pick out some highlights from each year in order to share with you in a playlist. Let's review my channel together, starting with 2015. In 2015, I was working in this ultra tiny space, and it was a shed that I built myself. It was only eight feet by 12 feet on the outside. I actually spent a lot of time building outside in the grass because I just didn't have the space inside to make the things I wanted to make. Because it was so small, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to use the space efficiently. I built a lot of space saving devices. I also started building my own power tools because wood was a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a full size shop tool. I know you're probably thinking a power tool made out of wood is not very good. And I thought the same thing, but this actually worked out quite well for me at the time. It wasn't quite as good as having a commercially made tool, but it was definitely better than using the basic tools that I was using before. And so this was a nice transition point that helped me to develop my skills and thinking about how things can go together, how to make things work. A lot of things broke and solving those problems is what developed me into the person I am today. So in line with that, I'm gonna recommend from 2015 the video five shop made tools you need to have in your shop. This will give you a nice little sample <laughs> of where all of this started. In 2016, I decided I would start showing more of the stuff that I wasn't recording, but was doing in the shop. For example, tearing down old broken appliances so that I could see how they work and learning about the components inside. <laughs> this turned out to be way more interesting to people than I thought. I had no idea that people would click on a video about me tearing down an old broken washing machine and using those components to make other things, but they did. This was one of the most wildly popular videos at the time. So for 2016, I'm gonna recommend things you can make with vacuum components. <laughs> and following that in 2017, which is a very similar year to 2016, you can find things you can make with washing machine components. And this was technically my very first viral video. It just exploded when I put it on the internet. I will never forget walking down the street and my phone going off with notifications from YouTube about all these comments coming in. It's like, why are so many people commenting on the video? And in just a few hours, it had hundreds of thousands of views. I couldn't believe that the video was just exploding the way it did. Seeing this video go viral also made me realize that I wasn't the only one doing this kind of thing. I thought it was just gonna be five random dudes in their garage who clicked on this and were interested in how I disassembled these things and figured out how to use these components outside of the machine, which is why I made another video called How to Wire Any Kind of Motor, because I had spent a little over a year trying to figure out how to take any motor from any machine, whether it was a treadmill, washing machine, whatever, and wire it up so that I could use this thing in my homemade power tools or in some other application. The whole reason I wanted to make this video is because I spent so much time, well over a year, figuring out how to wire all these different kinds of motors. But I knew I could explain all of it in probably 10 minutes once I had gathered all the knowledge from all over the internet and from various books that I had. Why not just make the video? I knew a few people would appreciate it. I just had no idea how many people there actually were. And it was these videos together that sort of solidified in my mind, I wasn't the only one, that people are finding this stuff helpful, and so maybe I should keep doing it. I also wanna point out that my channel wasn't monetized at this point. Uh, I'm sure other channels were doing sponsorships and stuff, but I wasn't. I, uh, there was no money motive. <laughs> I was only interested in sharing what I had learned because people were responding to it. And I thought, well, as long as people want to see it, I guess I'll keep making it. But I also realized during this time that people were interested not in just watching me make things, but they wanted to learn how I did it. I sort of transitioned from just building things in my shop and you watching me to me bringing you along behind the scenes to see how do you put all these things together to make something yourself so that your ideas can come to life as opposed to just watching me bring my ideas to life. So for 2017, my top video pick is how motors work for beginners. 2018 is when you start to see the shift from the woodworking you know, maker content into the more engineering focused content. And that's because I was excited about the things I was learning at work. People often ask, what did I go to school for? Or where did I learn all this stuff? And the answer is I'm completely self-taught. 
the things you see on my YouTube channel is stuff that I just came up with from researching on my own. And of course, many, many experiments with electric motors and other electrical components to figure out how they work on my own. Engineering wasn't even on my radar as a career until someone saw one of my YouTube videos and offered me an internship at their engineering firm. I mean, I have a bachelor's degree, but it's not in engineering. I took it, but when I started working there and seeing the formal implementation of engineering with formulas and a more systematic approach to problem solving, all of my abilities and skills just started to go through the roof. Things I felt intuitively started to be written in formulas. And so I wanted to take that and share what I learned uh, in my videos. And this is around the time you see that happening. In line with that, my pick for 2018 is gonna be Engineering Principles for Makers, part one and two. Back then I was concerned about making videos more than 20 minutes long, so I broke it up into two parts. 2019 was sort of the birth of me thinking about automation and robotics. You see my first full-size CNC machine, which is a video I'm gonna recommend for 2019, building the ultimate CNC machine. It was a combination plasma cutter and a wood router machine. It was a huge table. There's a link to the playlist in the description. Also during this time, I transitioned from just talking about how to wire basic motors to looking at stepper motors and servo motors, including me building a servo motor from a treadmill motor precisely to show you how it works. 2020 is when I fleshed out all of this automation knowledge. You start to see me really dive into relays and contactors, how all of these various components work. There are a lot of explainer videos during this time, as well as me building out things in my shop. I also moved houses during this time, and so you'll notice that my garage gets significantly larger. In this space is when I really start to flesh out uh, the automation, both in teaching you how to do it, as well as applying it to my own projects. But my top pick for 2020 is definitely gonna be how to speed control your miter saw. And that's because it wasn't really about speed controlling the miter saw. It was about thinking about a problem and trying to solve it, even if it's absurd. Can you really do this? I thought it was very interesting, the solution that I came up with and the things we learned on that video. 2021 and 2022, I'm gonna to combine together because we're basically gonna call these two years the robotics years. This actually started from someone asking me at a conference, like, what would be your dream project? It just hit me quite suddenly. I did not plan for this. I would love to build a robot arm, like, like a full-size robot arm, which you see in a Toyota factory or something like that. That would be incredible to say I made something like that in my home shop and I became obsessed with that idea. But my top pick for 2021 would actually be my Tesla's greatest invention video. So that's gonna be my 2021 pick. And for 2022, I'm gonna pick the finale for the Jarvis series because he really dominated 2021 and 2022. That project tried to kill me. <laughs> that moment when Jarvis finally works, was just so incredible. I was so overwhelmed. I could barely speak to the camera. It was really an incredible moment. 2023 and 2024, I'm gonna combine because I would call this sort of the, the age of travel. Went to visit Yaskawa's factory. Uh, I toured some uh, CNC factories in China, PCB factories. I went to several college campuses. My 2023 pick is gonna be my tour with NIAR and all of the engineering that we saw there. So that'll be my pick for 2023. We also see a lot more teaching videos during this time, especially in 2024. We talk about harmonic drives, which is a special kind of gear. We talk about the mechanum wheel. I talk about regenerative braking and how it works. Regenerative braking will be my top pick for 2024. That video is a great example of me building something explicitly to teach this concept that a lot of people are exposed to, like whether you like EVs or not, regenerative braking is still an interesting concept that I thought people should understand. So it's my top pick for 2024. 2025 started out pretty rocky with uh, me traveling for a funeral and then coming back and having surgery on my foot, which made it so that I couldn't walk for a while. And then I was on crutches for a while. And all of this time, months, I wasn't able to make hardly anything in the shop. I started thinking about, man, like what am I gonna do if I can't do this anymore? I mean, I expected to get better, but I was also starting to have wrist pain. And so 
Uh, that affected my 3D modeling and just thinking about, you know, the struggle. And that happened to be the time that I met the owner of Sin Cut Sin. Sin Cut Sin is a digital manufacturing where they will make parts for you and just ship them to your door. We developed a relationship. I started working with them and they have been a huge asset to this channel. I'm so grateful to, to have them as a partner for all of next year. And, um, they make parts that I can't make. And even though I'm back in the shop now, I have still found it to be really helpful in expanding my capabilities. I'm now at a place where I have access to five axis CNC machining. They have a huge water jet for cutting carbon fiber. They do bench sheet metal. So I have just found this to be not only a huge expansion in my capabilities to make interesting projects, but also a relief, frankly, when I'm not able to make that I can just send them my 3D model and then they send me the part. So I want to say thank you to Sin Cut Sin for uh, joining the team here. They're going to be sponsoring videos all next year. And I'm looking forward to working with you guys as we continue to go into 2016. If I had to pick a top video for 2025, it would have to be how to automate anything. That video is like the combination of many different concepts that I've been thinking about over the years. It brings together things that I'm really passionate about you know, that is teaching and automation and helping you to make the projects you want to make. That's the kind of content I love making the most. And so I think that video best represents what I hope my channel will continue to be as we go into 2026, both making things and teaching you how to make. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put the playlist for all the videos I've mentioned right down here. And I also wanna say thank you so much to all of my patrons and YouTube members. You guys are a huge part of allowing me to do what I do. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. See you in 2026. All right, bye.